Hello friends, family, and other creatures of the sea. Welcome back to a high level best of three. Today we have Max Pax playing for Team Sidestorm Gaming. In the top right is our red Protoss player. And in the bottom left as our blue Terran playing for Sidestorm Gaming as well, actually. So a Sidestorm Gaming uh, party over here. It's going to be Gumiho. Uh, both of these guys have their own intricate little styles that I always love watching. And we're starting here with Max Pax. Who is opening up with just a single... Proby in gas for now, so low gas count kind of indicates Twilight Council in the early game here, but it's difficult to, to make any big predictions just on seeing the gas mining. We do have a double gas opener coming out of Gumiho, and that doesn't surprise me, because if there's one thing that Gumiho is good at, it's throwing sand in the eyes of the opponent. Uh, sand in your eyes hurts a lot, trust me, I've had a lot of sand fights when I was a uh, young boy in elementary school. Next to the regular yard where we could you know play football or throw tennis balls against the wall there also was a sand pit and this was often used for big sand fights where the goal was to throw sand in your opponent's eyes to stun them and then throw them on the floor so uh, kind of like a, a hybrid form of wrestling which also included range attacks in the form of sand gumiho if he was in my elementary school and joined some of these sand pit fights surely would have been an absolute master at this because he's good at confusing you, he's good at uh, figuring out what you are doing, and at the same time denying you any type of information. It's the first Reaper popped on in over here, did not quite get the scout, did see that there's a battery in the main. So Max Pax is very, very keen always on getting batteries in the main. I actually did follow this up with a Stargate, that's somewhat surprising to me, as it does delay your second unit um, at least a little bit, and we're going to see, well, uh, a consequence of that right now, losing one losing one worker and on top of that this target also is just going to get scouted the moment gumiho decides that's a good idea oh my god he's just juggling these two reapers here uh, taking out two workers to start with gets the scout third worker is going to end up falling as well reaper will most likely die here i believe right yeah reaper is going to die we'll throw a final grenade that's uh, the final gunshot that that bad boy will shoot out it's the first cyclone is on the way right now no oracle it's just going to be a straight phoenix and a second barracks as well as a third barracks this is a little bit reminiscent of the style that ryung was playing during intellect stream masters <laughs> intellect stream masters katowice 2022 so that was this year for the people who are losing track of the years um we saw a lot of like these early factory or double reaper openers out of him and then going into three rex and if the protos open stargate against this it's very tricky to move out with the first phoenix because you if you're out of position with the first phoenix and a mind drop hits you're going to be in trouble if you're out of position with the first phoenix and a cyclone pops in and kills it that sucks as well so there's just a lot of things that can straight up you know kind of kill you if you're out of position but if you never scout and your opponent plays three racks and this can be two types of three racks here this could be the macro three racks or this could be an all-in three racks with a tank um in both cases as the phoenix player you really would like to know it uh, because ideally you stay on two bases go up to four gases and throw down a robotics facility rather early that's not going to be the case here for max packs it does have the two phoenixes out but it's just going to be in well a little bit of trouble might be an understatement um, let's just say that both of Gumiho's hands are filled with sand right now. And uh, Max Pax is also weaker in a fist fight, so he would not win. Yeah, this, uh, this, uh, this actually is a real issue. Twilight Council is on the way. It's... I mean, no, nothing is going to be done by the time the this Twilight... By the time this push is going to hit, Twilight Council will have, like, charge halfway, maybe. That's going to be it. We already have to push out across the map. This is what I'd consider a fake push out, perhaps. It's not really meant to deal damage. It's just kind of meant to delay any type of major attack. Um, and then it moves back and then it moves in. So you can just push in, push out, push in, push out. Uh, keeping your opponent in the dark. That's one of the main things that Gumio is so darn good at. eBay has a follow-up here as well. Still 38 workers. There's no SCV pool with this yet, I should say, perhaps. Okay, we have a couple of SCVs actually coming in. As there's also two sentries here at the same time. I mean, this army moves over towards this... Uh, this third base, I don't really see a way for for Max Pax to deal with this, or if Gumiho just manages to squeeze through here, I also don't really see a way for Max Pax to deal with this. Like I said, charge is not even going to be close to being done here. Combat shield is about to finish up. Stimpack just finished up. There's still two cyclones alive as well. Super battery could get activated. It's going to get used immediately here. And oh my God, look at that! 
the blue battery putting in some real work. I feel like Gumiho stayed around a bit too long over there near that green battery. There's still two tanks though. Um, two cyclones have come down. Let's take a look, see what's going to end up happening here. Battery will get targeted, although it's empty. Uh, so it's not actually going to matter all that much. Another stim gets used here. These gates get unpowered. Third tank shows up. Bunker goes down as well. Phoenix is not managing to pick up any reinforcement, which is usually the main purpose of the Phoenix. Charge is finishing up in 12 seconds, but the Zealot count is so little. Triple lives here on the tank. Stim gets activated. Phoenixes get popped out of the sky right now. And every single probe is going to end up falling. 82 supply against 46. As Gumiho wins game number one here in this best of three. And that immediately brings us to game number two here in this best of three. It's going to be played on Moondance. Now, Moondance is actually quite a tricky map. Uh, people, they look at this map and they go, this is a good Protoss map. And I probably agree. I mean, you get a pretty much a free third base. The fort isn't that difficult either, but you do have this weird area over here, which is hard to hold. And the reason why this is hard to hold is because the aggressive rotation is a lot shorter than the defensive rotation. And also it's almost impossible to hold this general area. So imagine, just you know, imagine a three rex push out or something with two metafax comes out, stands over here. Then either the Protoss needs to defend this ramp, wanting to stop the Terran from moving up here, or the Protoss kind of needs to figure out where this Terran army is going. Are they planning on dropping in towards the main? Are they coming in towards the natural? That can be very difficult. You also have dropping capabilities here, running all the way from the natural over to the potential third base that is here. There's just a lot of space to cover with vision, but also just with position of units, which is why we often see things like Phoenix Colossus being played here, or at least some type of Stargate opener. But after watching that last game out of max packs, I'm tempted to say that this is not going to be a Stargate opener. It's also an interesting wall. I'm not sure if this is actually a wall. I say this is an interesting wall, but this, this is more like interesting architecture this doesn't do very much it has no real purpose which is fine i mean not not every building needs to necessarily have some type of function i'm a, I'm a huge fan in my old city where i used to live we used to have these cube houses I'm not quite sure what the function of them was and it just looked pretty looking at it and tourists would take pictures with them people were would not be capable of paying me enough to force me to live in there but yeah, I mean, it, still buildings. In StarCraft 2, however, most of the time I am a fan of using my buildings for some some type of function, some, some functionality is nice to have. I don't think this actually properly, uh, properly is a wall here. Probe is going to pop in right now. We'll actually see that there's a factory. We'll see that there's a reactor uh, memeing about as well. Ooh, okay. This is some TVT-like build orders. Look at that. Oh, I really like that. I actually really do like that. That's so funny. This is this is a, a, a more recent trend actually that we have been seeing is where Terrans in the TVP matchups have been very keen on playing things like Double Reaper Hellion into Cyclone, which is technically a bit of a TVT build, um, but also things like Five Reaper, Three Hellion or Three Reaper, Two Hellion, which all of those originally kind of stem from, from TVT builds. Like if we look back when we first saw them, like. 99% of these double gas openers just come straight out of TVT. It's interesting to see. We have to wait and see how these units are going to be used as well. So there's two things. You can either try to straight up engage or you could try and go for some type of bounce. It's not going to be a bounce, at least not yet. Uh, Probe's trying to take out these Reapers and Hallians. Not doing a great job. Probe's, of course, not the greatest fighters in the world. Um, these Reapers are doing a darn good job, though. Five workers already going down. Uh, there's no battery in the main, no battery in the natural. Uh, this is an actual issue. There are seven workers uh, down the drain. Yes, natural CC had been delayed for Gumiho for this. But at the same time, if you, if you lose seven workers, you can see it here already. 31 to 28. That's not quite what you want. Usually you want to be maybe, what, 35, 36 to 29 at this point. Um, I mean, you're always going to lose some workers. It's uh, almost inevitable. It's just a, a painful little start here for Max Pax, who uh, is actually going to throw down a robotics facility. So we'll follow this up with a 
Phoenix Colossi type of build. Well, we see Gumiho setting up for a bigger push. It, he won't just stick to that initial damage and try to transition out. He says, no, I dealt some damage early on here. And I'll see if I can kind of leverage that into an even bigger lead in a minute, minute and a half from that initial pressure that he put on. It's interesting because this does give the uh, kind of that the possibility here leaves the possibility open for Maxpex to come back by having a good defensive fight. I mean, Gumiho is not throwing down quick infrastructure. There's no fast third base even. It is going to be a third before second and third barracks, which is interesting, of course. We have a Banshee follow-up as well, but with a robotics facility already done, I don't think that's going to be a huge issue. Viking is moving in position to land into that assault mode, maybe take out one or two more workers. Nah, with the battery there, seems to be almost completely fine right now. Phoenixes are caught out of position, which means that the Viking will survive at least for a little bit longer. The gateway and the cyber core that were uh, pretending to be a wall over here also get taken out. Immor Immortal from the high ground trying to deal some damage on this cyclone is not quite going to work out. Where did the Viking actually go? Okay, it's going back into the natural. I was like, hey, the Viking did not just manage to kind of uh, freak me out, but also Max Pax got tricked by that. We'll eventually clear it up. Robotics Bay on the way. Needs to start a third base ASAP right now. I mean, just invested a lot in defensive forces here. Work accounts are completely equal. Um, but yeah, the, the overall supply is still very, very much in favor here of Gumio. Gumio actually mm, is following this up with Mac, right? No, what? Okay, I'm very confused, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm seeing four gas, but then also two Ebays. But still no extra barracks. Oh no. Is this the battlecruiser follow-up? No. Okay, it's just barracks. Very, very odd way of doing things here. Gumiho. Banshee? Raven? I mean, there should be a Banshee on the map already. Yep, goes in towards the main base. It's going to get a couple of a couple. It's going to get a, a bunch of kills here, actually. Uh, there is one observer out, but it's completely out of position as well. Uh, these probes moving in towards the natural. We'll try to get healed here by that battery. Third base does get spotted as well as the Banshee gets taken out. There's another Banshee on the way, like I mentioned before. And there's also a Raven building right now. Continued tank production. Only two extra barracks. Production here, the infrastructure, is going to suck massively for Gumiho. But as long as he doesn't die, gets his 1-1 one -one up. Gets that Raven to stay alive. And maybe kills, what, three, four more workers with this Banshee. His life is going to be just fantastic honestly fantastic at this point i'd almost say here if i were max packs you know what throw down that fleet beacon throw down a second stargate just mass those phoenixes get into carriers and just camp on three or four bases you know just take this as a forward base throw down a bunch of cannons and kind of just play it from there i think this is a, a legitimate way to play at this point i really believe that what do we have here Gumio adding mortars. I feel like Gumio is kind of misreading this situation here. No, no, actually, there's a lot of phoenixes actually. Is he misreading this? Or am I underestimating the phoenix? I guess getting a turret there isn't the worst thing in the world, huh? Banshee going to make its way in right now. I like that he kind of waited for these phoenixes to show up until he wanted to pull the trigger. This is good damage here for Max Specs, by the way. <clears throat> Seven worker kills kind of hoping that this Banshee isn't going to end up killing six more workers as well. But with all those batteries in position, that seems uh, like a difficult job for the Banshee. One on finishing up. Armory is on the way as well. So barracks uh, four and five still haven't even started yet. Am I mistaken? No, they... I am. Yeah, they've already finished. My apologies. Banshee, yeah. I mean, might get half a worker, but that's going to be about it. I mean, batteries in every single position to defend. And this literally holds everything. Maybe this gas is out of reach of the battery. This is a big, big push out coming out of Gumio as well at the same time. Max Pax tries to pick this up in the middle of the map. There still should be a Raven here somewhere as well. Uh, it's kind of uh, hanging in the far back there. Would not mind if it joins this army because with Stim, Combat and five tanks, six tanks, excuse me, as well as uh, a couple of interference matrixes, this could be a killing push, not just a, a fun little push where uh, Max Pax might struggle keeping a fourth base up. No, this is the type of push that could actually win games and win series. We have more reinforcements coming in for base as well. 
being constructed. Money not really being spent here for Gumiho, despite that armory being done already. Oh, that's a matter of fact that gets taken out for free there. Good control out of max packs. Not messing about. Once again, is going to kind of try to, to pick this up. And their armor gets used on these phoenixes. We'll take a little bit more damage against these marines as a result of that. But will most likely still be capable of holding the main base at least for now. Every single marauder and marine gets picked up. I do believe that two, three phoenixes do end up falling as well. I absolutely hate when a unit is graviton beamed and is being healed by a medevac. You just can't take it out. <laughs> it looks so silly at times. You get a damage output of those marines. Once you have the... Once you have that anti-armor missile on you, it's a minus three armor. It's a huge deal. Especially against units with such a high rate of fire like the marine. He's going to get taken out here. Big supply block for max packs. Who is probably trying to set up for some type of flank or some type of of bust he needs to take this out eventually but we don't even have charge on the way yet hell the twilight council hasn't even finished quite yet and all of these things are just uh, starting to add up a little bit i'd love to see a, a feedback as well on one of these ravens more tanks moving in nine tanks out currently how many of those tanks are over here well we have eight tanks over here that means there must, must be one tank at home yeah once these extra reinforcements uh, kind of enter the fray I'm starting to fear for Max Pax's life. I have been fearing for his life for a little bit already. I'm going to continue fearing. Even more so if those reinforcements ever do end up arriving. 2-2 two -two finally starting as well here for Gumiho. Here goes Max Pax. Guardian Shield gets popped. We have what? no lifts. Well, two lifts on these tanks with double interference matrix as well. Disruptor gets targeted down before the Purification Nova gets to hit what it wants. And Gumiho, with half of his army still at home, is going to completely crush Max Packs. Not just in this game, but also in this series. What a dominant performance here out of the South Korean Terran player. He's been performing well in the GSL as well. Showing us how it's done. Currently in the round of 10 in that GSL, I believe. In a pretty good position in his group. And Max Pax, uh, not quite up to par here. Not in the shape that he needs to be in to take out a player of this caliber, apparently. This Gumio, after returning from the military service, has been uh, making waves left, right and center. Now taking out uh, probably the best foreign toss. Some impressive moves coming out of him here. There is only a single medevac left. And, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, oh no, Charge actually has finished. Two. We're going to be fighting 2-2 against plus one attack. The moment that finishes, this game is completely over. Would love to see some extra barracks being added as well. Perhaps going back up to 8. Uh, Ghost Academy is a possibility as well here. As uh, Gumiho continues reinforcing this position. Vehicle weapons level 1 not quite done yet. Here comes the target fire. Take a look at what these tanks are targeting. Going for that disruptor first. And straight away going for these colossi. Just dropping like flies. Archons will go down as well as the final immortal falls. G gets called as Gumiho wins the series with a 2-0 score. Fantastic early game. Both times just showing that yes... It's important to have good mid game and that you know how to finish. But if your early game is this good, even I would have been capable of winning that game, those games. Well, that's not completely true, but it's close. It's just fantastic knowledge of the early game, really showing that he knows how to beat uh, very, very good Protoss players. All right, that's going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this rather short best of three series. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you so much for watching, and bye bye.